Welcome back everybody 1222 on a Tuesday and heaters may start to kick in tonight because of a near widespread freeze that is expected all across Central Texas tomorrow morning and that could create an increase in demand on the state's power grid. Today we wanted to bring in an expert to discuss the costs that could be associated with that. So this afternoon we are joined by Kerry King. He is a research scientist at the University of Texas at Austin, not too far from the station here, and the assistant director of the Energy Institute. Kerry, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. It seems very apropos given what we're expecting with the weather here to talk a little bit more about the power grid. So when temperatures are expected to dip like they are in the morning, what does that do to the cost of providing electricity? Well, the cost of providing electricity for the power generation units that are on the grid uh, does generally increase a little bit just because there's higher demand. And when you have higher demand, the prices go up because you're asking for the higher cost, the next higher cost generator to turn on. Hmm. Uh, and so this tends to happen uh, when we get these freezes uh, and cold snaps. And the morning conditions are often the highest demand when, as you say, people are turning on their heaters in the beginning of the mo morning. Hmm. So how does that impact what we end up paying for our electricity bills? A lot of people at home probably wondering, are we going to be paying more? Right, certainly a concern from winter storm URI. And uh, generally, these short-term fluctuations occur on what they call the wholesale market. And those prices do not generally translate directly to a household consumer. Uh, those costs are shielded by the retail provider, the, the person you pay your bill to. Uh, during URI, uh, there was uh, an ability for customers to buy a electricity contract that was directly linked to the price of wholesale electricity and that caused some of those consumers to pay extremely high bills uh, during that week uh, but that has one of the changes since 2021 has been to outlaw that kind of contract that directly links a customer to the exposure and wholesale prices that can spike during uh, winter storms yeah speaking of that winter storm of course that is not too far from a lot of people's memory that 2021 deadly winter storm. So uh, in your analysis, uh, as you're looking at kind of what ERCOT has shared, the state's power grid operator, about how well it could potentially handle and avoid a situation like that, what do you think? Right, well, on paper, you know, the amount of power generation does look generally adequate. And the question is how, uh, how do conditions play out in the near, in the real time? And in Yuri, the combination was, of course, cold, but freezing weather. Mm. So we haven't had a chance to really stress if the changes made since uh, winter uh, storm Yuri in 2021 uh, have really, that have been put in place and the penalties for generators for not winterizing, we haven't really had a chance to test that fully. Uh, so the electric grid looks good. We've got some new changes such as uh, batteries and so more solar, which helps in the daytime. The batteries help a tad in the morning, but they can't help for a day long mm. uh, outage event. Um, and the natural gas system as well has had some changes and, and preparations and regulations for winterization. But every time there's a sharp cold snap uh, that gets near freezing or below, we still do see drops in natural gas supply, which again affects the, the price of electricity, at least on the wholesale side. Right. So as we know, you know, this winter has been pretty mild, actually, <laughs> unusually <laughs> warm to say the least uh, and ERCOT leaders are predicting a greater than average chance that extreme cold events will come so we were curious what has changed and uh, is there anything that could happen to I guess reduce those outages from happening right well uh, you know ERCOT uh, does a uh, you know their job is to do a good planning and have uh, communications with not only the electric suppliers but also hopefully some communications with the natural gas system to understand the risk to supply from that. And so the, you know, everything is preparation. There's not much you can do kind of in the short term, aside from being able to maintain great communication amongst all the partners uh, and try to understand how to, you know, if you had to uh, better coordinate uh, rolling blackouts, if that were to occur. Um, but, you know, measures have been put in place and it, I don't, hopefully we don't have to test them out, but their job is to assume that another storm like URI or worse could occur and to know how they'd respond. Certainly oh. something scary that we all think about. We <laughs> are definitely in that boat. All right. Well, uh, Kerry King, we appreciate you joining us here this afternoon to talk more about this. And uh, hopefully we'll continue our conversations at another time. Okay. Thank you. All right, everybody. We will send you to break and we'll see you after this.